Good morning, preppers. Good morning. Good morning, Ashley. Yay. It's time for another star-studded appearance from Goshen Prepping. <laughs> Not just Ashley and I, obviously. But uh, we want to talk about reasons to be preppers. Now, we're preaching to the choir, obviously. Mm -hmm. You guys are already here and at least have been interested in prepping. Uh, so this video may be for you. However, it's for all the family and friends that think you're nuts for prepping. Yep. You're crazy. You've all been called crazy by somebody you know. But I, I'll be honest with you. How many times have you actually talked to somebody about prepping and they'll be like, oh, you know, I've been thinking about it, mm -hmm. but why would I prep? This video is for you to give Share. to them. But yeah. again, it might be good for you too. So as we continue, we'll actually give more and more valid reasons why you should be a prepper so that we all know exactly why you're doing this whole thing. So here we go. Yep. Top 10 reasons you should be a prepper. Well, your friends, family, and neighbors should be preppers. Number one, job loss. We all saw it in 2020, how everything collapsed and people just lost their jobs that have been in jobs forever. And it was awful. And you guys don't want to be in that boat. No. And let's look, go ahead and look at history as a lesson. The Great Depression, 25% of the American population lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. But you know, the experts are talking about how we're heading for a greater mm -hmm. depression. And we're already seeing job loss it is. Right now there's a huge yep. labor shortage in the United States. And so job loss, you can't guarantee that you're gonna have money coming in. Yeah. Can't guarantee you're gonna have food on the table. So prepping is going to help remedy that. Number two, neighbors down on their luck. Let's help our neighbors. Yes, guys, we all have a loved one or a neighbor or relative down the way that we can help out. If they're sick or maybe they did lose their job, you could have a little extra food that you could give them and it would make so much to them. And there's actually a self-interest in mind too because understand, Community is so vital, especially when crap hits the fan. And in that situation, you're going to have just another ally mm -hmm. in your neighborhood that's going to have your back. Even if they may not have a lot of food, they may be coming for more food when that happens. But when it comes to security and helping each other out, you want to have as many allies in your group as possible. So help out your neighbors, guys. It's just the right thing to do okay. anyway. Number three, be ready for emergencies. This is a big one. We don't think about this sometimes. It's the natural disasters that happen if it's a fire or a hurricane or tornado, things like that. Or Sasquatch. Yeah, or Sasquatch, exactly. You never know when Sasquatch may cause an emergency at your house. Exactly. He likes to eat food. We lost a whole bunch of stuff in an ice storm once. Mm -hmm. It lasted a week without mm -hmm. power because of the ice bringing down the wires. Yeah, it would. Have, it was awful. So, so we lost a lot of fridge and freezer stuff, we but we had a lot of canned food to we be able did. to maintain and survive. I mean, in those situations, we could have, could have gone out and eaten at a restaurant every day, but that's not really smart. Yeah, either. that's not... Yeah, so be ready for the emergencies. I mean, at the very least, listen, people call you nuts as far as being preppers. Ready.gov mm -hmm. and FEMA and all those things tell you exactly what we're saying. Be ready for these emergencies because, in other words, the government, they can't, can't depend on them. They, yeah, can't depend on them. They may be controlling the emergencies, if you know what I mean, but you can't depend on them helping you. Number four, evacuate for bugging out. So we don't simply just say stock up in food and water and medical supplies. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's important too. But when you are prepping, it's not simply just stocking up on stuff, but preparing everything. For example, especially if you're in the city, we have so many people mm -hmm. who watch this channel who live in cities and have like a little apartment and bugging out may be your only option mm -hmm. if that time comes. I mean, you obviously should still stockpile food, hide it under your bed, put it in your closet, whatever you can do. But when bugging out comes, if you don't make preparations for bugging out, you're asking to die. Yeah. I'm not kidding you, because bugging out is obviously gonna be a last ditch effort anyway. It is. But if you don't actually have a place where you're gonna to go to, bugging out is like, yay, I'm going to be in my backpack for the next three weeks and have no idea where you're going. It's then, not gonna do you any good. No, suddenly you'll be that marauder, marauder, marauder? Marauder in a neighborhood where they're like, who's this stranger coming through? Yeah, exactly. You need to have a place in mind. And have double evacuations. Like, no, one route or two. Don't yeah. just go with one and think that's going to work because something might have happened. Yeah, and bugging out buddies. Yes. You know, have, have friends or neighbors, maybe the one you gave some food to, and say, you know what, if we're going to bug out, let's go ahead and meet here. That's what we did. Yeah, we, we lived did. In Florida. We actually had a very specific place in a town that was like 100 miles away, yep. and we're going to meet right exactly right here. Yeah, we did. It didn't happen. No, thank goodness. But anyway, you need to actually have that ahead of time. And that's another reason to be a prepper, so you can prep this kind of stuff too. Number five, have all your paperwork with the same kind of notion as far mm -hmm. as evacuating. If you don't prep, then it's difficult for you to keep in the mindset of, I need to have everything in one location. Mm -hmm. Birth certificates, 
marriage certificates, social security cards, passports, yeah, everything, bills, doctor's information, exactly, contact list for your friends and family. Yeah, because who remembers their numbers anymore? I don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so have it all in one location. In fact, I'll put a link below. There is a fireproof bag. I've never actually we have one, but we never do. tried it out. I've actually heard from one person it doesn't work amazing well, but actually having something like this so that way you know you can grab it and it has copies of everything and you can take it with you exactly and if you're not a prepper for some reason people don't think about this no they don't it's very overlooked and that's the worst thing if you have to file for a new driver's license or a social security number card or any of that it takes forever for them and especially if it's in some kind of disaster it's going to take even longer so if you're smart and prep ahead of time and put all those important papers in a folder or bag or something that you can grab and you know where it's at then you guys are saving time and energy well and it's even worse too because let's say you're actually in a house and they say a wildfire is wildfire <laughs> where that came from a wildfire is coming close to you well you're going to be thinking about well we probably should grab the kids and, and the we probably should grab the pets yep and we probably should grab i don't know whatever and honestly some of the paperwork you wouldn't even think about yep. grabbing so if you have copies of it all in one location because you're a prepper it is going to make your life so much easier when your house catches on fire number six power outages we've all been in this boat where we've lost some kind of power especially with what's going on out west as far as the Hoover Dam and having low power, it's, it, it's upon us. Yeah, and they're shutting down nuclear power plants and instead of the government saying, hey guys, we'll figure something out, they're shutting down more fossil fuel plants and coal plants and all those other things. At the same time, our overaged nuclear power plants are shutting down mm -hmm. too. We're not getting better when it comes to power. It's getting far it worse. And so let's say that you can guarantee you're never gonna have a natural disaster in your house. You should still prep. Because guess what? Power outages are coming to a neighborhood in your, well, I would say near you, in your neighborhood. And be able to prepare for this, it doesn't even have to be a solar generator. Nope. But having some alternate means to prepare food. Exactly. Having some canned food, which doesn't need preparing, just kind of warming up on something. So that's definitely a reason to be a prepper right there is simply the coming, well, they're already here. Yeah. But the coming blackouts, which we've been warned time and time again, are only going to get more and more plentiful. Number seven inflation oh my goodness this hits home i think for everybody the grocery bill has gone out the roof it's just unbelievable how things have gone up yeah and the government says they claim that we're 9.1 percent inflation and i'll tell them they're full of it no because when you look at the price of certain items in the grocery store all of them have gone up yeah but some things have actually gone up significantly mm -hmm. i actually did a little video i don't know if you saw this where we saw rice yeah. Rice was one of the cheapest things that actually only went up a little bit, but it still went up by itself 13%. Yeah. So I mentioned that video and think about this concept for a second. Let's say that rice went up 13%. Everything else, obviously like wheat's like at 70%. Mm -hmm. Everything's going up. Are you getting a 13% raise? No. Nope. Probably not. And even if you do, what's the inflation going to be like by the time you get that raise? Exactly. So right now, a, corn, a can of corn that costs a buck is going to cost they'll say 30% more, $1.30 in mm -hmm. the future. And if you're only getting a 10% raise, you're now down 20% on buying that corn. That's so up. any extra money you have going toward food right now because of inflation, and it's not just food, but everything, mm -hmm. now's the time to get it because it's only going to get far more expensive in the future compared to like how much you're getting paid. Yeah, exactly. So you won't be able to afford it. Number eight, another pandemic. Oh, okay. What are you talking here? I don't know. Oh, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> But I will say this, that the government, after they actually made more attachments with the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. is Biden even said, we need to have more money for the next pandemic. It's almost like they're planning, planning it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Either way, they are screaming things like monkeypox and previously Zika and all these other things that are going around. They're preparing for another pandemic. Yeah. So you know what? You should prepare for another pandemic. If you believe it or not, you should prepare. And so, because understand, if we're going to have more lockdowns and, oh, we don't call it lockdowns, we call it shelter in place. That's so much more soft to be able to just shelter in place. If you're sheltering, sheltering in a place that doesn't have food yeah, or a way to make the food, all those things, yeah. sheltering in place is not going to be so much fun. It's like prison. It is. Actually, prison's better. They give you food. I think they call that house arrest. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Number nine, martial law, curfew. A curfew? What are they talking about? Nobody wants a curfew. Or even... Oh, well, house arrest, I was going to say again, but yeah. martial law. Understand that in 2020 when the riots were happening, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, protest. No, the riots were taking place. Mm -hmm. It was actually taking place where people were told to stay in their homes. Yeah. I put out a video 
quite a while ago about a person where the police officer forcibly put the person back in their house, even though they were actually just on their own front porch. Mm -hmm. So what happens if they order you to stay in your house for days or weeks? Yeah. What are you going to do? Exactly. What are you going to do for food? Ah, that can of corned beef hash, because Goshen Prepping told you this was coming. So anyways, obviously, prepping for more of those problems that are coming to your neighborhood near you, or again, possibly your neighborhood, yeah. is only smart. Number 10, peace of mind. Peace of mind yes. is huge. It is. And this should be a tagline on this channel, our tagline we use all the time. We prep so we don't live in fear. And if you're a prepper and you've been prepping for a while, you'll notice that as time goes on, the more and more catastrophic that mm -hmm. things that happen outside your house, the more at ease you are. Yeah, exactly. And I'm obviously not here to knock people's beliefs or anything, but I have people often say, well, you know, I don't live in fear because I have God. And that's true. I understand that and can relate with that. But even Joseph had a situation where he was told to become, he was probably the, was the first prepper. Yeah. He stored all those giant, grain. massive, massive grains of, of wheat. grains, yeah, yeah. wheat and stuff, to be able to prepare for coming famines. Well, guess what? There's a famine coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I'm not God, but I'm telling you, you should prep because you need to be able to take care of you and your family exactly. and not simply just sit back idly. That's never in any scripture nope. to sit back idly and let things take place. Exactly. But we prep so we don't live in fear. All right, wow, Time's all kinds on. of things. Yeah, so write these down, write them on your arms, so that way you have that neighbor or friend yeah. or loved one, brother, exactly. sister, mom, dad, kid. Somebody. Yeah, everybody has them. Who calls you nuts, you'll say, huh, nuts. You're nuts because you're not doing this Number stuff. one, <laughs> you may lose your job. Number two, you know, obviously you want to be able to try to remember some of these things because it only makes sense to prep. As those people, you've seen it too, where they have their head buried in the sand, they constantly just eat out every night and they live go the to life movies. Without, and, yeah, without yeah. work. Not, nothing wrong with eating out once in a while. Nothing wrong with going to the movies once in a while. Yeah, you should actually still have family engaging events, but you need to prep too and have a balance between the two. Exactly. All right, hope that helps. Let's go ahead and check out this next video, which will help you as well.